Hello YouTube, welcome to another League of Legends guide. Today we are covering Support Sona. Only you can hear me, Summoner. What masterpiece shall we play today? Now quickly, those of you that are looking for a Bard guide, I did say Bard would be the next champion. However, he's also going to be coming out today, so don't worry too much. But anyways, let's hop right into our Sona guide. Let's start it off like usual with our pros and cons page. Sona is a champion who offers a little bit of everything. She has good poke, pretty solid sustain, and a hard CC. Pretty much everything you'd want in a support champion. When she uses her spells, she then provides a lot of buffs for her team. Bonus damage, shields, and extra movement speed. One last thing that's great about Sona is the fact that she's relatively easy to use. She's a champion who, even if she is played on a new player, she can still offer a lot to her team. Now, although that may be the case, this still obviously gets better and better as you progress with your skill in the champion. As strong as she may be, she still has a bunch of cons, the first one being she is very, very fragile without items. This means she can have a pretty hard time dealing with champions like Nautilus and Leona if they do get on top of her. Her abilities are very spammable, and therefore she's relatively mana hungry if you are using them often. Her Q has a decent range of 850, but it's still shorter than other champions. Lulu, with a Q, of course has 925, and Morgana has 1175. This may not always be an issue, but you could have a hard time dealing with champions who can poke you from a longer distance. She then has very horrible wave clear, and if she is against a siege comp, this could become an issue. Lastly, the lack of mobility. All she has is a movement speed buff from her E. Other than that, absolutely nothing. For our masteries, we go 18 Cunning and 12 Resolve, taking either Windspeaker's Blessing or Thunderlord's Decree as our Keystone Mastery. Both of these Keystones are fantastic on Sona, and you kind of choose either one based on the enemy team. If you know your lane is going to be relatively simple and you need a bit of additional burst, Thunderlord's Decree would of course be the better pick in that situation. If, however, you know the lane is going to be very rough for you and you do need extra strong heals and shields, you do have both, Windspeaker's Blessing is fantastic. Sona is a champion who works with many different runes, but these ones here are my favorite. As long as I know I can bully the enemy lane, I like the Magic Penetration Reds, Health Yellows, Ability Power Blues, and Ability Power Quints. This will, of course, make your poke absolutely ridiculous and people aren't going to be able to deal with it. If you are against a tough lane, however, there are many other options. You could take Magic Resist Blues, you could take Armor Quints, you could take Armor Yellows, you could take Hybrid Penetration Reds. The Hybrid Penetration would be, of course, if you do know you can get a lot of auto-attacking off on the enemy team. If you can't, then they would be rather useless. Many, many different options that you can use on Sona, and you kind of choose based on the type of Sona you are. For our first summoner spell, you'll always want to take Flash. It's great to disengage from team fights and ganks, reposition during trades, and also to engage with her crescendo. Our best defensive option for Sona would be Exhaust. It will reduce the enemy's movement speed and attack speed, as well as reduce their damage and resistances. This summoner excels in skirmishes or to stop large portions of damage from the enemy in team fights. If you're looking to be a bit more offensive, Ignite would be the better option. It also excels against champions who abuse healing like Soraka, Alistair, Swain, and Mundo. The Ignite then adds some nice true damage in those fights, which can land you some nice kills. As for her abilities, we'll start with her passive, Power Court. Very simply, after you cast three basic abilities, Sona's next basic attack will deal bonus magic damage with an additional effect on the last basic ability cast. It's also worth noting that this does reset your auto attack timer, so you can auto attack, spell cast, and then auto attack with your power cord instantly after. This passive will also proc on towers, inhibitors, and the nexus. In addition, the bonus 40% from your Q will also apply. This can add some much needed damage when you are sieging. Also, if you do have your power cord up and you attack a ward, it doesn't actually waste that effect. It will look like it does, but you will still have it. Don't be afraid to attack wards when you have your passive up. In the early game, you're pretty much always going to be using your Q power cord for its extra poke damage. When you get into the late game in team fights, I do like W's power cord better for its damage reduction. Then there's E's power cord, which is nothing to scoff at either. 
It's a great power cord for pick and chase potential, as it does provide a slow. Next is your main ability, your Q, Hymn of Valor. When activated, Sona sends out bolts of sound that deal magic damage to the two nearest enemies within 850 range, and it prioritizes champions. As for the aura, Sona and allied champions tagged by Hem of Valor's aura deal bonus magic damage on their next basic attack within 3 seconds. So this ability is of course your main harass tool. It has a low cost, low cooldown, and it charges your passive nicely. When you are using this in skirmishes, make sure your AD carry gets this auto attack buff. That extra damage can be what pushes you over the edge. As we know, your passive does reset your auto attack timer, so try auto attacking, then using this, and using your empowered auto attack for a really nice quick burst. This power cord will deal 40% more damage, which is absolutely insane when you are trying to burst a target. In the lane phase, try to land your Q as often as possible, and make sure you're hitting these auto attacks to push them out of the lane. Now for Sona's W, Aria of Perseverance. When activated, Sona heals herself and nearby allied champions with the lowest health percentage. The healing is increased by 0.5% for every 1% of the target's missing health. For the aura, Sona and allied champions tagged with Aria of Perseverance's aura are shielded for up to 1.5 seconds. So as this is a shield and a heal, this of course is your sustain duel. It has a low cooldown, however it does cost a big chunk of mana. As it heals more based on the missing health you do have, of course you do want to try to use this when you're actually missing a fair amount of health. The best way to use this though is to make sure you get that shield off as well so you actually block a chunk of damage first and still get that heal. When you use Power Cord charged with Sona's W, it will reduce the target's damage output by 20% plus 2% per 100 AP for 4 seconds. This can be fantastic in team fights on those high damage targets to reduce a lot of the damage coming in. In a bot lane engage, generally you will want to try to get this on the AD carry as opposed to the support, but some supports out there do even more damage early on in the game than their AD carry. Now for your last basic ability, your E, Song of Celerity. When activated, Sona gains a burst of movement speed that decays over 3 seconds. The duration, however, is increased by 0.5 seconds for each ally she tags with the aura. As for the aura, of course, when she does tag a friendly champion with it, they gain bonus movement speed for 1.5 seconds. This does have a pretty low mana cost, so you pretty much want to spam it whenever you are coming down the lane after you buy or have died, so you do get there a little bit quicker. In team fights, you're only really going to be using this to reposition or chasing people after the fight ends. When Power Cord is charged with Sona's E, it will slow the target's movement speed output by 40% plus 4% per 100 AP for 2 seconds. This is a pretty solid slow and will land you a lot of kills when enemies are trying to run away. Use the movement speed to catch up and then this empowered ability to slow them so the rest of your team will be able to attack that target. Last but not least, Sona's ultimate, Crescendo. For the passive, this reduces the base cooldown on Sona's basic abilities, so this is what allows her to spam those abilities much more often. When activated, Sona plays an irresistible cord in a line, dealing magic damage to enemy champions and stunning them for 1.5 seconds, forcing them to dance. Now this ability is what makes or breaks Sona players. This is by far your most important ability, and if you can stun an entire team, it's going to be a relatively easy team fight. In those 2v2 fights bot lane, try to position this so you can hit both the AD carry and the support champion to destroy some noobs. Flash Crescendo is a great combination that can catch people completely off guard. You can use it to start a fight, or you could wait partway into a team fight to get into a strong position so you can stun multiple targets. One important thing you have to know is it is considered a projectile, so it is blocked by Yasuo's Wind Wall or Brahms Unbreakable. Keep in mind you're always not looking for the maximum amount of targets. If an assassin does get on top of your AD carry and you have no exhaust, you may have to use this on that single target so your AD carry can live through that fight. For our skill order, we want to start by maxing our ultimate, then our Q, W, and then E. Depending on the bot lane you are facing, you'll want to take either a second point in your Q at level 3 or your E. If you're against a strong early game jungler, you may need that E at level 3 for the extra mobility, but I do generally like to take the Q at level 3 myself for some extra poke. 
In some situations, you may want to try maxing your W before your Q first if you know the lane is going to be insanely hard. I tend to try to avoid this at all costs. I prefer having really, really strong poke, but if I know the lane is going to be next to impossible, then I will consider taking the W. When in the lane phase, try to focus on harassing your enemy opponent as much as possible to push them out of the lane and generate as much gold as possible from your spell thief's edge. Make sure you zone the enemy as much as possible so they will miss a lot of CS and give your AD carry a nice advantage. However, make sure you are very careful against all-in champions like Leona and Lucian that can destroy you if they do catch you. When you finally force the enemy bot laner to back, make sure you shove the minion wave under their tower before you back so they will miss a lot of CS and you'll make it back in time so you don't miss any. Last, make sure you get your sight stone as soon as possible so you can keep up some vision. Also, make sure you are purchasing vision wards to control vision somewhere on the map. Sona is a support champion who synergizes with a lot of the AD carries out there, but these ones are my favorites. First up would be Ash. You can combo their ultimates to leave people CC'd for a very long duration and can land you some insanely easy kills as long as you land your ults. Jinx is another AD carry that works great with Sona as to combine their four potential CCs, two of which are hard CCs, to destroy the enemy team. Sona's ultimate will then make Jinx's ultimate incredibly easy to land. Ezreal also works great as they form a very potent poke lane. Focus on landing all your skill shots and harass your opponents out of lane for an easy CS lead. Jin is great for basically the exact same reasons. Amazing poke. Jin is then also a very immobile champion without sustain, and Sona helps him in both of these regards. Last, Misfortune. They form the ultimate AoE damage combo in team fights. Land both of these from a safe position in a team fight and watch the enemy team melt away. Now for her hard matchups, and Sona can pretty much win every matchup out there, but there are some which can really make it hard. Champions with good sustain like Soraka, Nami, and Janna all have decent win rates against Sona. Generally, if they are really good at using their own kit and staying at a decent range, they can completely negate your poke as they can out-sustain it. Then there is all-in champions like Nautilus, Blitzcrank, and Leona. Early on, Sona will generally be able to beat up these champions for a while, but if they start landing their own skill shots, you're going to have a really rough time. All it takes is one or two kills in the bot lane for the enemy all-in duo to start taking complete control of that lane. Make sure you're not over-aggressive in these lanes and you remain cautious. Do not get caught in a bad position. Last but not least is our item build which starts with a spell thieves, health potions, and a warding totem. For our core build, we go for Eye of the Watchers, Athene's Unholy Grail, Lich Bane, and Sork Boots. Of course, we take Eye of the Watchers for its great support utility and all of those wards. Since we are rather mana hungry, Athene's works fantastic on Sona. It then has some great passives, some ability power, and magic resist. Lichbane is a great way to finish off your CDR and add a ton of damage. Even though Sona is a support champion, when she does get a Lichbane and already has some decent AP, she can start absolutely deleting squishy targets. Since we are already CDR capped, we take the Sork Boots for some nice magic penetration to increase our damage. For the item pool, we have the Frost Queen's Claim, which is a decent item if we don't like the eye, but I really don't take it too much on Sona. Locket is of course a great support item, especially if you are against stuff like Brand, where the shield is really effective. Then of course there is the Ardent Sensor in the Mikhails to increase our support utility. Since this is a solo queue guide, I don't really go for these items too much, I do prefer to go for higher damage so I can actually help carry games. So to accomplish this, we have the Ludens Echo to increase our burst, the Rylai's Crystal Scepter for some nice AoE slows, Death Cap for some mass AP, and of course Abyssal Scepter if we do need some magic resist as well. To finish off our item pool, we have two items I really don't like taking on Sona, but some people do enjoy taking them. We don't really have the health pool to make good use of the Frozen Heart, which is the main reason I don't really like it. Of course, we're also CDR capped, so this is kind of a waste. As for Zeke's, this is listed because it is great if you are duo queued and you can make good use of that passive it does have, but when you are with a normal AD carry, usually don't even bother. 
So for the first full build here, we take our core and add a Ludens Echo and a Rabadon's Death Cap. If you do get in the ultra late game, you could get rid of the Athenes when the enemy has a bunch of MR and add, of course, a Void Staff. This does a stupid amount of damage, and if you can land all of your skills on the AD carry, they will die instantly. If you are looking to be more of a support, I mean, you are a support after all, you can instead take the Locket and the Mikhail's. The Locket adds some nice defensive utility, and the Mikhail's can get your AD carry or somebody else squishy out of a root of some sort, which is a fantastic thing to do. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is it for our Support Sona Guide. Thanks for listening to me ramble for 16 or so minutes, and if you guys did enjoy the video, please like and subscribe, there's a lot more to come. You can visit us on our website, www.egamingtv.com, to view a nice list of our guides, and also enter our skin giveaways on our Twitter, at egaming underscore TV. Thanks a ton for watching this video, guys, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace. I don't know what you want. Let's have